Welcome back to Life to the Max. You've driven by, or maybe you live near one of those, a church. And in the rural areas, these become the focal point, the gathering area, a place to worship, and much more. But in each one, there is a story, a story worth telling. You've seen them many times on journeys into the rural country. They are landmarks, but you probably don't spend much time really thinking about it. In Stearns County, they are rich with history. The uh, church was founded in, in 1910. The first mass that was said here was 98 years ago on Christmas Eve by Father Peter Brenny. On this day, the Cushel family is taking a tour because in the 1800s, one of their ancestors, Paul Cushel, was contracted to build some of these structures, structures that still stand today. It was just special because we, everything was just perfect, you know, and, and, it, and it went off like, a, oh, I don't know, like it should, should have been. It was, mm -hmm. it was beautiful. The Paul Cushel church tour started with my cousin Tom's idea of getting our families together uh, to go to the churches that my great grandpa built and asked if I would be willing to help out uh, with some of the, the work that needed to be done to make that happen. I've known about the, you know, our family heritage of great grandpa being a church builder. I, and you know, I've had the list of churches in my industrial for probably 20 years, and we've never honored or celebrated that, you know, really properly as a family. It's, it's been in my head for 20 years, so it was easy to put it together. To have Great Grandpa Paul at the heart of it is a big part of it. Paul uh, came to uh, the United States back in the, his family in the 1850s, and they settled in Luxembourg, Minnesota. And the story I have is that when the church in Luxembourg uh, was built that one of the Cushels, either Paul or his dad, did a lot of the plaster work and masonry work on that church. Uh, from there, he continued to build not only churches, but he built other buildings as well. John Roscoe knows of what he speaks. He and his brother Robert put together a book on the churches of Stearns County. I'll look back to how this land was settled, how these communities were formed. What strikes me is that they are just a preponderance of ornament and structure that works together so well. Uh, the design of these churches is based on century-old patterns from Germany, from the Gothic and the Romanesque. They are studies in priorities. As they settled the land, these pockets came together, and the church became the centerpiece, one that means some families would walk to worship. How long do you think it took them? It'd take them, usually what they would do is they'd start out on Saturday, walk all day, and they would stay overnight someplace with relatives and then attend church and walk back the next day. They are symbolic structures. Paul Cushel's masterpiece might be in Freeport. It is such a beautiful church, the inside. It's just like the guy said, you could spend, you can't see it all in a day you know, with something special. There is so much that represents so much. The church is settled by people who came mainly from Germany and kept a community intact in part through the church. One of the things that's interesting about Stearns County is that it was mainly populated by uh, German immigrants and they came and settled in parts of Stearns County according to the region of Germany that they came from. So that you would have a Bavarian community, Albany is a Bavarian community, Melrose is, so is Cold Spring, whereas New Munich is the Westphalian community. What is impressive is how they came together, a spirit of creativity known to entrepreneurs. They organized and they had a vision. The entrepreneurial spirit came, I think, a lot from uh, the German character of these people. They were, they were very enterprising people, very hardworking, very conservative. And so they brought that with them. They, they brought, brought that with obviously, them. Obviously, if you challenge yourself enough to immigrate here, you've probably got that spirit. That they brought that spirit with them. They have stood the test of time. They are today what they were yesterday and beyond. 
spectacular glimpses into what can be done. The 1800s brought to the 21st century. Well, that church is still, still that symbol today. And uh, I think the people back at that time, of course, very traditional in their beliefs. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what they would think about things today. If they were to go in the same church, they'd say nothing has changed yeah. be because they're so, they were built so well. The parish at St. Anthony was founded uh, way back in the 1870s by Slovenian immigrants. The company I worked for did a project right across the street from the church in Freeport and just walking through the front door I was absolutely awestruck. It was just amazing, beautiful. I just hadn't ever really been in a church you know that had that kind of, of pious uh, ambiance and, and that kind of beauty and, and that architecture and, and the color and, and light and the stained glass windows. Um, I, I was just in awe. Today I feel like now I know it was my great grandpa and he built that church just gives me a great sense of, wow, this is my family, this is my great-grandfather. That's why they gather on this bus. They realize what came before them. I'm impressed immensely by the, you know, the buildings were built back at the turn of the century in, in 1900, 1910, and, and uh, the condition that they're in now is, is just fabulous condition. There are the details of the stained glass, a signature of churches. It is in this that you realize there was a sense of unbridled passion for what they did. It stained glass in Gothic churches came into prominence uh, in the 11th century, but here we find the stained glass having the same character, the same feeling of spirituality, and it's a remarkable craftsmanship to put those colors together, put the message and the garments of the saints and so on, uh, reflect certain uh, religious and spiritual values. There are the cemeteries that are almost always adjacent and on the same property. There's a cemetery near uh, a lot of them. In some cases, there's even a baseball field, so you get that cycle of life, and the house is nearby, and the shops, uh, right in, in a very small community. Through it all, whatever it is enters into your soul, filled with a sense of spirit and a sense of history. How do you feel when you go into a church after you know the history of it? Is it different? It feels different. It feels it, different. It, it, it almost like you can kind of transport yourself back to those days when that church was Especially going. when you know the history you right. and you and understand you know history, right? who it was that started it and the leaders, right. and, and were the ministers often the big leaders in that township? Uh, oftentimes they were. That's why they gather on this day. To understand exactly what Paul was building all those years ago and to understand who they are based on who came before them. We've always worked with genealogy and, and keeping track of family and it's, it's very interesting to them. I think most of them just seem to enjoy doing things like that, keeping track of stuff. Life to the Max is brought to you by LifeTouch, photography for a lifetime.